Well, glad to have you here with us on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Here's some historical facts. In 1801, the first official census in Great Britain, they counted 10 million noses there that day. In 1849, Abraham Lincoln applied for a patent on a device that he had created that would lift up boats over shoals and uh, different obstructions in waterways. Um, and he's the only president who ever applied for a patent. Uh, some of them should have for the patent of stupidity, but that's <laughs> another subject. In 1862, the first United States paper money was printed in fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, five hundred, thousands. Now they print it like it doesn't mean anything, but uh, that was back in 1862. In 1876, the first telephone call. Yes, Alexander Graham Bell calling his assistant, Thomas Watson, and he first said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. And I believe he did. Here's a strange one. In 1893, New Mexico State University was having their first graduation service and they canceled it. And the reason they canceled it is because they only had one student that was gonna graduate. His name was Stan, Sam Steele. And the night before graduation, he was robbed and murdered. Mm -hmm. So why bother, I guess? So mm -hmm. that's strange. This is a better one. In 1963, Pistol Pete Rose debuted his Major League Baseball with the Cincinnati Reds, and in that day, his first two at-bats, he got hits in both of them. Who would have known? Some birthdays on this date. 1940, Chuck Norris. Uh, yes, the martial arts and actor guy was born in Ryan, Oklahoma, so he's now 81 years old. 1948, Mr. Cavs, Austin Carr, mm -hmm. was born 73 years old. And how sad that on his 73rd birthday, 83 years old, Joe Tate passes away. And I'm sure they were longtime friends. Mm -hmm. 1964, a birthday. Prince Edward of Great Britain, Elizabeth II's son, was born in uh, Buckingham Palace. So he's 57 years old today. A couple deaths that are of note. Uh, 1913, Harriet Tubman, uh, that civil rights abolitionist, she died at the age of 91. And then in 1998, Lloyd Bridges, yes, from Sea Hunt, was 85 years old when he passed away. So there's a little bit from history, now going into the future and thinking today we're on Revelation chapter 15. We're going to look at just a couple verses there, three and four, really, are all we're going to look at. But at this point, we're well into the middle, second half of the tribulation period, at least as far as I understand, that's where we're at. And uh, the power of the beast has been broken, and before the uh, judgments or the plagues are about to begin, we're going to get a glimpse, a short glimpse, of the redeemed's praise to God. That's where the prayer comes in. It's a little bit similar to what Revelation 5, 8 through 14 has, and we're going to see some other similarities as well. Someone wrote that it's an outburst of great joy at the first sight of their heavenly surroundings and their first unclouded vision of God. We often wonder what's going to be like the first time you see God and when first and second you're in heaven, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? What's it going to feel like? Uh, I think that was Warren Wiersbe I got that from, but he's suggesting this is a little bit of a glimpse of that. So Revelation 15, I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. It says, And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of all ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, and for your righteous acts have been revealed. So what we need to do is set the setting of this a little bit. The first couple verses 
tell us about the angels coming and how the judgments of the bowls are about to be revealed. Just to give you a little overview, there's judgments that take place in the book of Revelation. The first set are the seals. Remember Christ, the Lamb of God, stood forward, was able to take the scroll, which we say is the title um, of the universe. And so he, uh, he started opening one seal at a time. Every seal revealed another um, judgment. And then when he got to the seventh seal, then there were trumpets that sounded. There were seven of them. And each of those brought on another judgment a little bit stronger. And then we're, now we're at the end of the seventh trumpet, and there's bowls that are going to be poured out with judgment, seven of these as well. And these kind of mimic a little bit the plagues that were on Egypt. So uh, there are things we can see. Just to remind you, in chapter 12, there, uh, there's a war on earth, there's a war in heaven. Chapter 13, the beast rises up. But now here we are in chapter 15, we begin to see the defeat of the beast. And there's a remnant of people gathered around, and those uh, who are there are those who were victorious over the beast and his image. Martyrs. Some called them tribulation victors. And it seems, or at least some suggest, that it's innumerable, the number of people that are there. And what they're doing is they were given harps. Or maybe uh, it could be leers, which I don't know exactly what the difference between those two are. That's the, by the way, this is the only place in the entire book of Revelation where it speaks about musical instruments. Because all the rest is singing praise to God. But anyhow, it also said this group of victors are singing a song of Moses. And we'll see in a second what that talks about. But basically, they're magnifying God's holiness and his righteousness. The, the Song of Moses is referenced back to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. And in that chapter, Moses gives us a lot of the details of what God did in the Red Sea experience. And he's just documenting with praise everything that God did. So John here is reaching back into the Old Testament to teach us about God's judgment and his grace how God delivered Egypt, and he had a song of victory. In chapter 15 of Exodus, verse 1, it says, The Lord, he is highly exalted. Get down to verse 11, it says, Who is like you, God, majestic in holiness and awesome in glory and working wonders? In verse 18 of Exodus 15, it says, The Lord will reign forever and ever. Some also point back to Deuteronomy 32, another longer expanded song of Moses that has a lot of praise, but it is interwoven with a lot of discussion about the failings of Israel and how they rebelled against God, how they turned to idols and all kinds of different things. But in Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4 tell us about uh, the praise of the greatness of our God. And verse 4 says, He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. He's a faithful God who does no wrong, and he's upright and just as he. All of that's the background for what is being thought of by these martyrs who are around the throne of God and, and have escaped the tribulation, persecution, and now they're where they want to be, and they're in the presence of God. And Revelation 15 is a song of victory. It ascribes greatness, justice, truth, and holiness to our God. It's a wonderful song of praise. So it says in there that it is literally the song of Moses, but it's also the song of the Lamb. In verse 3, it says, He is great. And he's marvelous in all of his works, just and true in all of his ways, king of the ages. Now remember, these are tribulation martyrs who are saying that he's great and marvelous in his works, and he's just and true in all his ways. But you have just gone through the tribulation, and you have been probably persecuted and executed for your faith in Christ. 
just and true in all his ways. What faith and trust. And in verse 4, he gives us three reasons why we need to fear. Sometimes we use the word reverence, but fear is a good word too. And we need to glorify his name. One reason, he's holy. He's, he's holy God. And we need to fear and reverence him. Another is because all the nations will worship him. Everybody's going to bow their knee before him. And another reason is because his righteous acts have been revealed. Now it's finally coming. Things that put it all together and people, especially the righteous people, are beginning to say, this makes sense. This is where God was heading all along. Not necessarily installed on the earth, but it's being prepped in heaven. And I think of the prayer, thy kingdom come. And it is really getting close at this point. For you and I, and especially for those saints in the tribulation period in the future, we, have, we don't have to worry about giving in to the world system. Because ultimately, we're going to be the victors. And we're going to be the ones who stand with Christ and see his rule forever and ever. And we can stand firm today and know that he is with us and that he cares for us in every way. I think it was Penningill that said this, The Song of Moses celebrates God's mighty deliverance of his people Israel. The Song of the Lamb celebrates the great redemption purchased by the Lamb on Calvary by the shedding of his blood. We're going to celebrate Christ and redemption, salvation for all of eternity as we stand with him. Let's celebrate now and pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your shed blood and what that means. And not just the shedding of the blood, although that has rescued us from our sins. You have paid our price and we are eternally grateful to you for that. But even beyond that, uh, the resurrection of the victory over the grave, over death, that gives us life for all eternity. Christ, uh, you are the slain Lamb of God. Uh, you are the sacrifice that was adequate and acceptable to a holy and righteous God. When our sacrifices failed, yours is the one that counted and mattered and satisfied the wrath of God. And as we trust you, we are protected under the covering of your blood. Thank you so much for all that you have done to win us and rescue us from our very sins and then to claim us as your own children for all eternity. How grateful we are to you this day for your power, your wisdom, and your love and grace. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.